Thank you. I'm honored to be here to introduce this year's publisher honoree, Michael Peach. Apart from being CEO and publisher of Hachette, Michael's also my editor. And I can tell you just how beloved he is by all of us lucky enough to have worked with him. But what's so singular about Michael is that he brings to the literary world at large the very same gifts that make him such a supportive editor and a sensitive reader. That is to say, his wisdom, his intelligence and energy and kindness, and his very nearly unfailing patience, even when he's tired and overworked, as he pretty much always is. Michael was a Chaucer scholar at Harvard, and I love that if you ask him nicely enough, he'll be happy to recite from the Canterbury Tales in Middle English for you. But if you look at the list of Michael's writers, I think you'll see, too, how wonderfully enthusiastic and broad a reader he is. And he's very, very practical as well, with a strong sense of fairness and balance, which is what makes him not only a responsible publisher and astute CEO, but also such a good citizen in the larger republic of letters. He has an eye for both the forest and the trees, the near and the far. And even with all the huge decisions he's constantly forced to make, he's attentive as well to detail, with an eye to how even seemingly tiny matters might evolve and grow and ultimately prove significant, if not crucial, in ways that not everyone might foresee. He's also shown himself over and over to be a brave publisher. If you look at your program, you can see a few of the many, many ways in which he's been a force for good with Penn and the National Coalition Against Censorship. With his decision to publish the posthumous manuscript of Charlie Hebdo editor, Stéphane Charbonnier, a book which many less courageous publishers would have found it very, very easy to pass on as it involved armed guards, public controversy, a considerable amount of anxiety and expense, and no financial incentive to speak of, and his efforts to resist censorship of works in translation in China. It's this wide field of engagement that animates Michael's work throughout. He's in love with books. He loves the whole marketplace and machinery of producing books. He loves every possible aspect of the literary culture, including a lot of its more difficult and less glamorous aspects. All Michael's wide variety of work in all his nearly 40 years of publishing is illumined by his readerly enthusiasm and his knowledge that the abiding power of the written word can provide for those of us who love books a still point outside the world, outside time, outside oppressive ideologies and regimes, sometimes outside even death. We're all fortunate to have in the publishing world someone of his strength and integrity to say nothing of his gentleness and charm. And I am delighted to invite him to the stage to accept this award. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor and my joy to present to you this year's publisher honoree, Michael Peach. Thank you, Donna Tart, for those extraordinarily kind and beautifully composed words. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And thank you for your glorious books. I want to thank my wonderful colleagues at Hachette for their very hard work preparing for tonight and soliciting contributions, as so many have done, especially Sophie Cottrell, Eve Rabinovitz, Reagan Arthur, Jamie Rabb, Megan Tingley, Ronald Blunden, and Ashat Leibwood Global Chairman Arlo Nouri, who is with us tonight. 
Thank you to all the writers supporting Penn by gracing this dinner, especially those published by Hachette. Thank you for trusting us. Thank you for trusting us with your books and for your partnership. Thank you to all the warm and generous colleagues here tonight, publishers, literary agents, booksellers, manufacturers, paper makers, legal counsel, and other friends. We are fortunate people drawn together in this ancient and delightful work connecting writers to readers. And thank you most especially to the redoubtable, courageous, and glorious J.K. Rowling for being with us. The first rule with Penn is if they ask you, say yes. It is an honor to be singled out by them in any way, and I thank them for this singling out. We've all been singled out by being included here, and I want to thank everyone who has donated so generously to Penn, especially those of you here for the first time. I hope that you'll be moved to join in Penn's work and to return year after year. Because what Penn does is elemental to the business of publishing. Free speech and the freedom to write are the foundation upon which most of the people in this room build their living. Those of us on the publishing side like to imagine that writers have many supporters, and we can lose sight of what a solitary endeavor it is to create works out of nothing but your ideas and your words. Solitary, daring, and sometimes dangerous work, sometimes literally death-defying work, at the times that writers are at their greatest risk and most alone when there is no publisher or other supporter in sight it is important to know that Penn is there watching, listening, speaking out, fighting for writers. And this is a very serious moment. Many writers' lives, livelihoods, and freedom are in peril today. When truth and creative expression are met in so many places with censorship, disenfranchisement, with violence, with worse, it's a serious time. All over the world, writers live in peril. We hear sometimes here in New York's echo chamber about the publishing business being in peril. I love reading histories of publishing because of how comforting it, comforting it is to read that publishers basically have always thought they were just about to perish. <laughs> Postal regulations were going to do us in in the 1800s, and at the start of the 20th century, the demon of discounting was considered so lethal that publishers fought Macy's, the first discounter, all the way to the Supreme Court and lost. I don't mean to make light of the publishers uh, the, of the challenges that publishers and writers face in a business that has changed more in a decade than it changed in the century before. Nor do I want to dismiss the fact that in many parts of the world, publishers do face very serious threats. But in the U.S., book publishing is not in peril. We have our battles, but we find our way. Writers and publishers have always needed each other, and we should have faith that in our mo ever more complex world, we always will. So publishers, Let's be optimists about our business. The serious issue today is not a threat to us, but the threat to the writer's voice that is flashing around the globe and here in our cities, our campuses, our school boards, our state houses. Let us be brave and not too safe. And remember to publish wild voices, diverse voices, voices that make us uncomfortable, voices that can open eyes, change minds, and last. Everyone has their favorite memory of a writer's work that changed their life or got them through a difficult time, and I'd like to close with mine. We'd had a death in the family, and Janet and I and our two children uh, were driving home from emptying out a parent's house in Tulsa. We were Okies in reverse, heading east, pulling a U-Haul full of photos and furniture and a beautiful yellow wheelbarrow. And we had a new novel with us, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. And we did something we'd never done before. The four of us decided to take turns reading aloud a chapter apiece. And as we drove through Ohio and Indiana, that amazing boy's story came alive in our family's voices. And it felt as if we were fighting alongside Harry. And his story brought us through grief and bad weather and all that corn and delivered us home a little healed and closer than we'd ever been before. I want to thank Penn for their single-minded support of the writer's voice and the freedom to write, the freedom that protects every family's ability to find the books that can change their life. I particularly want to say how fortunate we are in this serious time to have the energy, alertness, and articulate brilliance of Penn President Andrew Solomon and Executive Director Suzanne Nossel. Thank you.